So we first met Kel in the sixth or seventh grade. He was at the village school and he was the same size then as he is now, six feet and absolutely jacked. I would say we probably became pretty good friends when I was uh, the manager of the tennis team. Kel fit in real quick. <laughs> uh, he was, he's always been athletic, so I think with his athleticism, he was able to make friends really quickly. Um, I think we also bonded over, uh, you know, probably uh, not being too interested at times in different classes and probably, probably being more interested in uh, hitting the weight room or, or going on the, the sports field, so. He's obviously a lot more athletic than I ever was or probably ever will be. Whether it's basketball, whether it's tennis, whether it's kickball, there's like any sport, you know, everyone, you know, Kel was a guy that you would pick first on your team. Kel's very dedicated to tennis. He was a self-proclaimed tennis legend, <laughs> uh, but he was. I mean, he, he would walk the halls and everybody knew that that was Kel Mabata, the, the, the stud tennis player at Kincaid. Not even just here at Kincaid, outside of Kincaid, playing nationally, he was a force to be reckoned with. Um, he was known across the U.S., really, in his age group for being a really good tennis player. I always admired him for his work ethic, his discipline, his dedication. And then Kel, the person, uh, one of the things that I love about him now is that he's just so loyal. He loves his friends, he loves the people that are close to him, and man, he goes above and beyond to make everybody feel special and to show people that he's a great friend and a great brother, of course. Uh, I can remember Kel, especially for his sound system and his truck, he would come through a class about 20 minutes late uh, every day, but all you hear was boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you always knew he was coming because of the subwoofers, and then he had like this strut walk that he used to do up and down the halls of Kincaid. He had a strut. You know, you like kind of like strutted as he, as he walked down the halls. You know, just thought he was, thought he was, you know, the hottest, hottest guy there, so. Seeing him like that was shocking. When I first heard about it, I was completely shocked. Everything that we had gone through in high school together, good stuff, bad stuff, everything in between, just that kind of all came together and just, you know, the world kind of stopped for a second. In the beginning when it first happened, and it's still to this day, every now and then I have pictures of him in um, a hospital bed. And I hate, hate having uh, those flashbacks, but In an interesting way, even though he can't do the things that he used to do, he's motivated others to make changes in their own lives. So people have said that they sometimes don't feel like going to the gym, but they go because they know that Kel's in the gym day in, day out. You know, it is pretty crazy to see how far he's come. I mean, just from, you know, from the very beginning when, you know, friends would, you know, visit him in the hospital to, you know, being able to walk, being able to, you know, do things that maybe seemed like they were almost maybe impossible or, you know, or at least a very far, far away kind of thing to see him being able to do those things now is pretty incredible. You also know in knowing Kel, he'll get there. It's just, it's going to take, you know, some time starting out and then you see where he's at now and he's past I mean, he's way past where they thought he was going to be at this point in terms of recovery and things he's doing physically, which doesn't surprise me. And it doesn't surprise, you know, a lot of the guys. The thing that really struck me uh, recently was seeing him back on the tennis court and seeing a guy who not too long ago, you know, was on a bed um, in a nearly coma-like state back on the tennis court doing something he loves. He's not a quitter. He's, he's had that work ethic instilled in him his whole life, and it was evident to all of his friends. The fact that he's making time to go to weddings and go to birthday parties and all this other stuff, I mean, just shows you that while he's got, you know, all his own stuff going on that he's dealing with in his rehab, he's still making time for his friends. When you think about why 
you know, the viewing area or the grandstands are, are named after an individual and you hear his story, you realize how, how, how powerful uh, the story is and how powerful this name is and is, re you know, representing not only our community but specifically Kincaid. It just tells more about Kincaid being a community that, you know, we take care of our, our people. Um, we really care about them, you know. Doesn't matter if you were here one year, lifer, Kelly, you know, three years, you know, once you join the Kincaid community, you're a part of it for life. A near death experience can happen to you that, that will forever change your life, whether it's physically or mentally or both, which it was for me. It was both physically and mentally. It's so physical to this day. It's why, uh, why I'm working hard every day, physical, doing the physical therapy. But, but even, even, even after all of that, you know, you, 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 you can still live, live a good life. There, there's, there's no words to describe what this project means to me. Um, I never knew that my story and how I'm treating my recovery could have such an impact on people, let alone Kincaid decided to name the tennis viewing in my honor. Um, this will forever be a long lasting legacy and to this day, you know, uh, I'm still speechless. Um, let me start before I, I get emotional, but please help me, help us, and more importantly, help King K um, make a success by donating what you can. Thank you.